Hello. Um, I guess my question is is more related to like the art industry. I feel like it's becoming really saturated, and sometimes it almost feels like it would be impossible to get in. Uh-huh. This is how much like competition there is and the requirements you need. Um, what do you think about that? What do I think about the industry growing? Yeah, and what you need to adapt to it, I guess. So what's your what's your main concern exactly, that you do all this work and then there's no jobs available for you? Is that what you're trying to say? Yeah, in a way, and also there's like a specific type of work I want to do it, like kind of more of the, you know, like growing up, you grow up with like the 2D concept art and the promo art, which is what you thought was concept art. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and so you grew up with that, wanting to do that, and then you realize that's not at all what concept art is. Uh-huh. So I guess, like, how do you adapt to where it's like, I can still do what I want to do without having to sacrifice and do something that's gonna be like soul bending or something, I don't know. <laughs> it's, that's a good question. So question that I have for you um, is what do you, what do you want to do? Um, mainly like character designs, I guess. Character designs. Give me and, an example. Um, like if I had a golden ticket and that golden ticket will get you to work wherever you wanted, like right now, what would that be? And what would you be doing? I guess I mean, I'd love to work on like a movie for Guillermo del Toro. Okay. Help more creative designs and stuff. That's a good. That's a good uh, place to start. Okay. So now, what you should do once you've made this kind of choice, right, or decision is ask yourself how plausible it is, okay? And how reasonable it is. And then at the same time, be prepared to never do that ever, okay? Meaning specifically working for Del Toro, okay? Mm -hmm. But what would that then lead to? Well, probably being a creature designer, right? Working in films, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So then is that plausible? Like what the, the one right after? And if the answer is no, then what's next? Then what's next after that, right? Because a lot of times um, people don't think about it on a broader scale and they think too much of things that they can never control, okay? instead of focusing on the reality of the world around them and the things that are in their control. Like everything I said was within your control to, to start thinking about, right? And then what you do is start to think about what's within your control when you ask these questions. Like, is it possible for me to work with Del, uh, Del Toro, right? And the answer is yes, it's absolutely possible, okay? And the following question after that is, well, what happens if you don't? Would it be working as a creature designer? Is that possible? Yes, it is. Okay. And then, so then you're all right. Well, what happens if, um, what happens if there, there is no creature design (laughs) artwork that's needed to be done, which is, that's, that's probably going to be very unlikely, but let's just say that there was no option there. And then what can you do next? So, well, I do like character designs in general, so it doesn't have to be creatures. So can I do that? Right. And once you've kind of pinpointed and like, I'm telling you right now, like it already ended at, I can work with creature design (laughs) in general, the Del Toro specific, like specific target might be a little bit more of a stretch not impossible and actually closer than you may actually think. Okay. But you have to ask yourself, okay, um, is it possible? And the answer is yes, it's absolutely possible to work with Del Toro. 
And it's even more possible just to be a creature designer in, in concept art in general. Okay. All right. Does, does this make sense to you? Okay. Oh, yeah. It's pretty simple. But then what happens? Then people get distracted with stuff like, well, there's other people in the way. They're really good and better than me. How am I going to get a job if these other people exist? Right? Like what happens if the market is super saturated? Let me tell you something. Markets are always being saturated. Okay? And there's one variable that almost always, almost always, always changes the circumstances, okay? And that is being good, being amongst the best, being amongst those who get picked, all right? When I was going to school, they said that there was no opportunity as a character designer because it's really hard and they only really hire the best, right? And I said, that's no, that's no, uh, th uh, that's not really good advice because you're saying that I can't be among the best then, or at least you're implying that, <laughs> all right? And I'm just asking, how do I become the best? I'm not asking if I have to be. I actually already knew that before you gave me that advice, <laughs> you know? I'm asking, how do I do it? And people would always continuously tell me, like, oh, it's hard. You should do 3D. And I'm like, what? You know? And so what I'm trying to tell you is, um, you know, it's one thing if other people do that to you, right? Don't do it to yourself, right? I think it's important to be realistic, right? Like having this idea that there is a large amount of great artists that work in it or trying to work into this industry, right? That's, that's smart. But you can't control that. That's always going to be true. Always. With everything. I was, as I was developing these new games, right? Making more and more games. Um, uh, I had a friend who said to me, he said, but the game market is like the indie game market is increasing. It's becoming saturated. And I said, yeah. What's your point? You know, I'm still going to do it, you know, and I'm going to uh, eventually achieve the goals that I have laid down for myself in game dev. In fact, I almost landed a, a game job, basically developing a game for a website. I almost got it, but I think they, they rebudgeted and they turned me down. But I almost had it. I got close. And it reminded me of the days when I was first trying to get a job in the art industry. You see what I'm getting at? <laughs> like, I'm wiser now. I know it's just part of the deal that you get turned down, you get rejected, you don't get jobs often. You have to earn it. And you might think that it's going to be really, really challenging um, and you're right, but it's not as challenging as you think because a lot of people think the same way as you do, except the difference is you want to be the one who doesn't give in to it. Make sense? Because mm -hmm. there's going to be a small percentage of people, you're right, that get these jobs, but you can be amongst them because you, you underestimate how fickle people are. <laughs> okay? People, even some of the best, give up af after a certain amount of effort. Or whatever they're doing, you know, and I've seen it time and time again, and and that's including me. Like I've kind of um, focused a lot of my attention on teaching instead of concept art, right? Because I kind of rather just teach. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, and it's because I've been doing this for so long. It's just kind of like, yeah, kind of over it. I'm jaded. And so what I'm trying to give you is tools to think about all this, all right? Before I give you the answers to this, this question, all right? Because once I give you the answer, if I didn't give you that kind of prefix, prefix or preface, uh, this answer could probably come to you really, really hard, <laughs> okay, this answer. All right, so the answer to this question, which is what do you do 
when the markets are saturated and there's a lot of competition? Like, what can you do? And the answer is the same thing you've already been doing because you are going to be competing against some of the best and there's a possibility that you're not going to be the best, right? In fact, there's a very high chance that's true. Okay. But you can be amongst the best and the only things you can control is how good your work is and how many people know who you are. That's it. Everything else is impossibly hard to control. You can't control whether a company is hiring or not. Like maybe you're good enough, but they're not hiring, you know? Um, maybe you're not good enough and it just seems like an uphill battle all the time. Like you feel like you can never achieve greatness, right? That's a real thing that happens to people. Not to say that they don't achieve greatness, just that they feel that they're not, they're not especially when they get, keep getting rejected, you know? And the reality is that you don't have to be the best. You just got to be amongst the best. And the way that I then softened this blow of like knowing that there's nothing you could do about it. There's just going to be more and more people. And you said it yourself, like, how do you adapt and do what you want to do as well? Well, the, the easy answer there is just adapt to new tools. You don't have to change the subject matter. Like if you like creatures, then do creatures in 3D, VR, 2D. Just be really good at creature design, not creature modeling, creature drawing, creature design. Make sense? Because then mm -hmm. it won't matter what tool you're using. You can design well wherever you're at. Okay? Um, and here's a good way of thinking about being amongst the best. So Usain Bolt is one of the fastest people on this planet. Okay? He has, holds a world record in several different races. Specifically, the 100-meter dash is the one he's well-known for. Okay? You know this already. I'm sure you do. If you just look at any kind of news organization or pay attention to Olympics at any point of your life since 2016. Okay? So let's say you and I were to train as hard and as much as he did since the beginning. Okay? since the very, very beginning, all right? There's a chance that even if we train just as much as he did, train just as hard as he did, he will still be faster than us because of just genetics, right? Maybe his genetics are just better than ours and that is impossible to change, at least for now, you know? And it's, it sucks to think that that's true, but it is. And so we will not be able to beat him no matter how hard, no matter how hard we train, because he will have that advantage over us no matter what. Right? But think of it like this, though. Let's say we race him in the 100-meter dash, and I come in seventh place, and let's say you're just faster than me for maybe some same reasons like genetics and you're in sixth place. So I'm a seventh, you're sixth. Okay. Usain Bolt is first and there's several other people better than us. So you could be upset about that or you also could think, well, that just means out of all the people who are able to race in this race in the world, I'm the seventh best, meaning that out of, you know, potentially seven to eight billion people, there's about seven to eight billion people minus seven that are slower than me. You know what I mean? At least who had access to this race. Definitely billions of people, you know? And in racing or Olympics, you know, nobody really cares so much for the seventh place runner, right? As much as they do for the first, second, and third, you know? But in art, if you're like the thousandth slowest racer, you know what I mean? You'd still have a place in the industry. You get it? So being amongst, I would even say 10,000, like the 10,000 people, right? 
or even a hundred thousand concept artists being amongst those hundred thousands of artists you will be able to secure a job because there's hundreds if not millions of jobs available to us okay unlike racing you know there's that's not as practical of a job <laughs> you know unless you go back to uh training other athletes then you can find a job there you know but unlike running art there is plenty of work okay and you can't you cannot you'll you may not be one of the really really best like when i think of like the best like uh, mechanical and robotics designer i think about vitaly bogorov you know like he's clearly like if i had to put a number on it like in the top five for damn sure uh, in the world okay and that's why he's like making real robots and shit okay <laughs> it's not an accident um if i had to rank myself in that same ranking you know i'm definitely in the thousands i think there's people definitely thousands of people better than me right i know because i follow their work and i like their work and i have the on my pinterest boards you know but that means that there are millions and millions of people that are not as good as me do you see what i'm saying and there's no reason why none of you each and every one of you in this class can't be amongst that either I used to be one of you, right? I used to be really, really terrible. Not to say that you guys are all terrible. I actually was worse than most of you. Um, but I used to be a student and I used to just not know anything either. And after just years of grinding, I'm amongst the best. And you know, this is true where some of the best artists start to like your work, start to say that they admire your work, people that you've admired. It's, it's a trippy feeling and it will happen for most of you. If you keep up the pace it's a real trip i promise you you know i used to study your reference all the time bro what the heck you know it's it's a trip and and then people start to follow your work and they treat you like you are some sort of god who has all these abilities but the reality and this is the truth is that you're not i'm not all i've done is painted quite a lot made lots and lots of friends in this industry, right? And that is how I sustain a career, okay? Does this make sense to you? So what do you do? You, you keep on trucking, dude. You just aim for the price. Don't get distracted with like your age, with uh, other people's work. You can't control that. You can't control any of that. You can't control people being better than you. There's always going to be a lot of people better than you. And I don't mean a little bit, a lot of people. But most likely they already have jobs and, and the companies that hire them doesn't mean that they're done. They just hire one person and they're like, all right, that's all the artists we need. We don't need any other artists ever in the world. That's never true. <laughs> you know. So even the people that may have taken the lead position to those jobs, you may end up working with those people. You know what I mean? And... It's just a matter of patience and persistence. It's really the, 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 the tools that you need. Was that helpful? Yeah, it's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, don't get distracted, right? Like that's a distraction because anything that will prevent you from drawing and working a little bit harder that day, like it can feel down. Right? Oh, what's the point? And then you are basically among, remember this, you are among those who do not. You're amongst the millions of people that I am better than. Do you get it? Mm -hmm. You have become, you've joined that party. But if you don't, if you're like, it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna keep pushing and I'm gonna try to learn new tools and try to be on the frontier, you know, and just maximize all of my high level skills. Remember I was talking about foundational stuff earlier, fundamental stuff? Mm -hmm. If I really focus a lot of my attention on that, then when the new tool is introduced, I'm not gonna be like capsized. I'm only using Photoshop because there is no tool that is better as of now. And the one that came close is Procreate and I still use Procreate and I'm almost convinced eventually I will completely be off of a computer. I'll be on my phone and my lap or my, lap, my phone and my tablet to do most things, which is cool. You know, because phones are getting more powerful. I mean, a couple more generations, phones will probably have eight gigs of Ram 
two dual processors or dual processors, right? And potentially a high-end video card or at least a medium tier video card. You know, think about that. Most software can run off of all the specs I just said, including Photoshop, off of my phone. You hear what I'm getting at? And I just ordered the thing called a DeX for my phone. And it's basically, you can plug your phone into it. And then you plug that into the, a monitor and then bam, it turns your phone into a miniature computer that you can plug a keyboard into this, this docking system and a mouse and your phone acts like a computer. So yeah, just give that a couple more generations, right? People are going to have computers. Like I do a lot of my meetings on my phone. I do a lot of email answering on my phone. I do a lot of business transitions on my phone. The only reason I use my computer is to do some high level work, like 3D stuff, you know, some Photoshop stuff. All right. But I only do it because that's the most available tools I have right now. I can transition easily to a new tool because I have all my skills in my brain, right? It'll just take me like a good week or two to really adjust or even a month to adjust to a new tool. But once it's happened, then I'm learning a new tool. You know, I'm now skilled and a new tool and my value increases. So yeah, try not to, try not to get distracted with tools being, you have to learn every single tool. Just learn tools because they're only becoming easier and easier to learn. And also, you know, uh, adapt your style to try to be something that's even more interesting because sometimes it's not even a technical thing. Sometimes you bring something completely different that people have never really seen before, right? And that's where I get a lot of my work from because people look at my artwork and it's not your standard mech heads or your standard creature designs you know because although there is a lot of saturation a lot of that saturated stuff is pretty much mimicking other art you know so if you can do something that's not that then you'll you'll have more of an edge but you can't control whether people want that edge or not so that's why you just do you do you boo but you just be amongst the best you show some quality to what you do all right. Any other questions? No? Everyone knows all the answers in the world? Cool. <laughs> if someone, you, can, you don't have to use the mic, too. I know some of you guys don't have mics. If you want to type, you can type it. But if you do have a mic, I prefer that you set it. Okay, I have a question. There you go. Uh, it basically goes to, toward the studies and stuff like that. Let's say I did that uh, 20 minutes uh, sketch, but uh -huh. the result wasn't that good. How should I... Cool. To push it even further so I can be able to finish it in 20 minutes or have a good enough quality. Yeah, you just ask yourself questions. Um, why wasn't it good? Right? Mm -hmm. And then once you've asked that, actually, I want to get rid of this backlight. I think it's cooler without it. Um, you ask questions like, what was the holdup? Or what, what, what was the mo my main frustration? So let's say you're painting it and after 15 minutes, you've only painted like the head, mm -hmm. right? So that's really easy to then be objective about, be like, oh, you know, I should not do that. I should get more of the design done much sooner. So then you can adjust accordingly with the next design, the following one, right? Mm -hmm. Um, but let's say it's a little bit more nuanced. Let's say you, you, you get the whole body in, you do all the stuff and it's pretty cool, but it's just maybe the design of it's not feeling good. Like you don't feel good about the design. Then ask yourself, um, why, why was the design really hard? What was, what was it hard for me to do? 
oh, you know, maybe it was, it was hard for me to come up with anything. I just kept on drawing the same shapes. So maybe I should do some studies of different kinds of shapes to be inspired by and then go in there. And then, or maybe I should try a different approach instead of like, you know, going straight shapes, maybe I should do a little light line art and then go from that, you know? Mm -hmm. So what you're doing is you're experimenting and you're trying out different methods. You're focusing on what you don't know, what you do know, what works, what doesn't work. And you're just ironing them out every time you do a, a drawing. Because when you have a lot of time available to you, right? Mm -hmm. What ends up happening is that you're allowed to just make a bunch of mistakes and then you'll just fix it later. But then that takes extra time, doesn't it? And so you're just like, well, it's fine. I'll just fix it later. And then you just keep uh, painting over it over and over and you keep making mistakes, new mistakes that you clean up. Without, so you basically are doing a thing where if you had a leaking faucet, like a faucet in your house that was leaking, mm -hmm. you, it's like you're using paper towels to clean the leaking, right? Yeah. But the, the thing is still leaking. You're not addressing the main, the main problem. When you have these 20 minute constraints, that is objective. You can see how you failed right? Because your, your goal was to have something reasonable in 20 minutes and you don't. Why not? You know, hmm. when you have 20 hours, you, you can't see that problem so clearly as you do when you see it in like a 20 minute span or even an hour span. You could do this for long, long stretch paintings too. You can be like, okay, I want to give myself a total of 20 hours entirely to complete this whole design. You understand like from start to finish this whole design is going to be done in 20 hours you know from thumbnails to iterations to sketches to finalization all that stuff you get it yep uh 20 hours so let's say the, the thumbnail stage takes you five hours of design and, and you do another five hours of iterations and then you spend the next 10 hours trying to detail it and at the end of the time you still find that the design isn't that good or maybe there was a lot of stuff you didn't finish. But as long as you were documenting like what you were going through, what you thought of, you know, or what was going on in your mind and different stages, what, what, when you did your thumbnails, how the iterations weren't actually helping or whatever, you know, you just start documenting like what the hell you're not doing right. You see how that's helpful, right? And then when the 20 hour mark uh, comes to fruition, you know, then you can say it's still not done, right? Um, so what can I do differently next time? This is how scientists roll. You understand? Like this is what scientists do. Scientists come up with a hypothesis. They said, this is a thing. And then they, they test it and they test it in all different ways. You know, they test it in all different ways and shapes and sizes. They test if it works in this condition They test it if it works in that condition. And so that's all I do too. I do that because it works. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, it's a tested model that works highly effective even before the scientific method was invented or defined. Uh, great inventors and discoverers were doing this. They just didn't have a name for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Fine. And, and you had to realize that when you don't do a good job, that is evidence that you don't know what you're doing. Always. That there's two things. You're unskilled and you lack knowledge. Both of those things, luckily for you, can be trained. You can train to have more skill and you can train to have more knowledge. Because I clearly did this in less than an hour, right? And it's pretty convincing. So this is obviously possible. I'm not, like I, like I said, I'm not a magician. I'm just highly skilled and highly knowledgeable, especially in this type of aesthetic. Now, if you were to ask me to do like a car design in the same amount of time, it would be tremendously difficult for me, right? If you told me to do um, a vehicle design or environment design, it would be incredibly difficult, all right? And it's, it's very simple to why. Because I've never practiced those things on a frequent basis. You know, but if you ask me to paint like a tumor monster in the dark, pff, I could do that like 15 minutes, you know, yeah. and that's because I'm really trained. I've practiced it for years, so I better be good.
<laughs> you know what I mean? And so um, if you have not done this, right, if you haven't done these short sprints of, oops, if you haven't done these short, um, you know, rounds of painting, you know, then you're going to be obviously bad, but that's the point. You don't want to be, you want to be faster. You want to be more effective, you know? And so you got to just practice it. It's like uh, I had a student once, I had him do tests, right, for himself. Like I said, do a bunch of studies and then test. Test what you've learned, you know? Yeah. And uh, he was like, okay, cool. And so he did it and he came back and he's like, oh, man, it was terrible. And I was like, well, what was terrible about it? Tell, walk me through it. And he was like, well, he's like, I'll do these studies, right? And then after the study, I'll test myself. And the test is just really bad. Like I just like, wasn't able to retain any of the information. He's like, what do you do when you, when you don't do good on your tests, like I just, the tests were always just such a struggle. And I said, well, that's the point. That's what a test is supposed to do. The test is neither supposed to be easy or supposed to be hard. There's no, um, there's no um, prerequisite of what a test should feel like. The test is telling you something if it's hard or if it's easy. That's all it's doing. So if you're testing yourself and it's extremely hard, then the test is revealing to you that you don't know the subject matter. And if you do the test and it's really easy, then the test is revealing to you that you are very well versed in the subject matter. Does this make sense to you? And because if you, he was approaching it like too personal, right? Like it should have been easier. And I was like, no, nah, man, if I give you a math test, on like something like pre-calculus or calculus, something that's really challenging, right? And you've never studied for it. You're most likely going to fail that test tremendously, right? Right. But then if you go study the test, right? Like you study the answers and how to get the answers and you do that for like a week and then you take the test again and this, this time you get like a D. You didn't fail entirely, but you got a D. What does that mean then? I learned a little bit more. You learned a little bit more. You still are what? You still don't know everything, right? Right. But you, you're making some leg room. Mm -hmm. And you, what do you do? So what do you do to remedy this? How do you get to that A? What do you have to do next? Study even more. Study even more. Take more tests. Take Figure more tests. Better. Absolutely. And that's all you're doing with these 20-minute thumbnails is that you're going to struggle. It's going to suck balls. <laughs> but you're going to study what you think you don't know. And you might be wrong. Right, you might think it's forms, right? And you, you practice forms for a little bit and then you, you go and you're like, nope, no, no. Like this still is garbage. But my forms definitely look better, so I definitely improved in forms, but uh, the design, so maybe I was focused on the wrong idea. So let me practice uh, design now. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. Instead of just being like, oh, why isn't this easy? Everything sucks, my life sucks, the world sucks. It's like, no, 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 it's, it's supposed to be challenging. And like I was just saying earlier to when I was answering the other question about how there's a, there's a large percentage of people who just, when they get to that situation that I just described, where they're not good and they quit, right? I'm sure you've seen this uh, from other people if you haven't experienced it yourself, where you, you uh, do something that you're not very good at and you'll make some excuse like, ah, oh, whatever, I'm not really into this thing anyway, right? Or, oh, you know, you know, like, whatever, like, this is stupid. I've always hated this, <laughs> you know? Like, you, I'm sure you've heard this or you've even said it yourself. Most likely both are true, you know? Yeah. And I always say to people that say stuff like that, like, uh, I had a student who said, I don't like to paint realistically. And I was like, have you painted realistically before? He's like, no. So then how do you know you don't like it? He's like, oh, I tried it, I didn't like it. I was like, so you have to be careful when you say something like that because you might actually love it but because you're so bad at it, you don't want to try to explore it. It's easier to just say, I don't like it because it sounds like an opinion. But I'm trying to tell you, it's actually a, not an educated opinion. Because if you were to paint like realistic paintings and photorealistic stuff, and then you were to say to me, I don't like it, I wanna, I'd rather do creature design for Del Toro or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Then I would take your opinion way more seriously. I was like, oh, oh shit, okay. Like you generally don't like it. <laughs> Okay, cool. Like, find a way out, bro. You know? Mm. Uh, I had a friend who was a um, CIF champion. It's like basically another way of saying just like a really good athlete in California. 
uh, specifically in running. He was the fastest uh, senior um, at my school. Okay. He was running like five minute miles for three miles. He had like a record for like 15, uh, 15 minutes. Okay. Mm. And um, when he graduated from high school, you know, all of these colleges were hitting him up for scholarships to go to all these different colleges and uh, for running. They wanted him to go there and compete, you know? And he was just like, no, nah, I fucking hate running. <laughs> he did. He hated it. You know, he thought it was boring. He thought it was like whatever. But, you know, it was fine because he's not saying it because he actually genuinely hates it, like from being bad at it. He, he actually just genuinely hates it. You know, he's done it. He's tried it out. And he's just not a fan. Right. And he, in fact, he said the only reason why he did it, like why he ran for so long was because of his friends, all of his friends ran. So he only enjoyed it because his friends were all runners, you know? And, and in that sport, he just decided to try to be the best at it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, but once the high school was over and all his friends were going to different colleges and, and most of them weren't going to, for running, he was like, yeah, I don't really want to do this. I don't want to keep running. I hate it. <laughs> and so he, he went to do something he actually did care about, which was linguistics. He wanted to learn languages. Yeah. You know? And so that's what uh, I'm trying to say is that like a lot of people would generally write off things that they're not good at. And so, and it's, it's true for everyone, including myself. It's not like I'm immune to this, but I'm more trained and more wise. So I'm a little bit more alert to this. So sometimes I'll confront something that I'm not really good at. Like for instance, I'm trying to learn um, deep learning stuff right mm. and i'm not very good at it and so um and it's really challenging but i was like i want to be good at it and so i already started looking into books and all that stuff and it's really hard and i was like oh man i, sh I don't know if i really want to do this but i'm like no, no i actually do i actually think this is really cool i want to really be good at this and i think i can do it you know mm. and so i started buying books and all that good stuff and started reading them you know and in the meantime, I'm just trying to learn how to make games as I'm learning some pre-calculus nonsense, you know? Yeah. And, and that's my point is when you're studying and you're practicing, uh, you have to ignore the fact that things are challenging because that's part of the deal. Okay. So when you're running into these problems or you're like, this is super sucky. Remember what I just explained, like that's part of the deal. And what you have to do is adjust and pay attention to the things that are going to help you improve, okay? Mm. And pay attention to what you're doing wrong, and pay attention to what you're doing right, pay attention to what makes, makes you feel good when you start working, to pay attention to the way you're studying, what, how you're able to retain information, how you're not able to retain information, the things that distract you, the things that don't distract you. You know, pay attention to as much as you can as you progress, and document as much as you can and have a lot of self-reflection often. Okay. All right. Yeah. Was that, was that helpful? Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll be the judge of how well you did next class. So don't worry. Okay. Like if, like I told you guys, you guys, if there's any place to really suck, this is it. <laughs> okay. Don't okay. be afraid of sucking. I give you all of you permission to be terrible artists for the next few weeks. Okay. That's the only way we can help you get better is to know where you're weak. And if you put your best effort in, then it's really easy for me to help you. If you do not, then it's much more challenging for me. It's harder for me to help you if you don't submit work and you submit half-ass work. Okay? And half-ass work specifically meaning like you haven't put a lot of effort into refining it and doing a good job. Okay? Mm -hmm. not, not that you have epically good work is the only way that I know you work hard that I know that you've actually tried. I can tell. Okay. okay. All right. Um, when I do the rendering, I always make things look dirty and messy, both in color and black and white. Is that because brush or something else actually already changed many brushes? Um, it's just because you, you noodle too much, meaning that you do this too much. 
Uh, that's one of the problems that you have, um, Diana. Okay. And then the next problem that you have is you don't have control over your values. So when you put down, like when you, when you push on your marks on your, uh, your pen, you're not able to control the intensity of a value by just pen pressure alone. And so you, you have these two things that help add to the problem of you having muddy colors and values. See, when you put a shape down and you don't want muddy values, the best way to do it is to make sure that you have broad strokes and really concise and well thought through design. See what I've done there? Like when I put that new shape into that black shape, like I'm picking the exact value that I already color picked. Like this is, this is me painting with white and I can prove it to you by pushing harder. See, if you can't do this, it's going to be much more challenging, isn't it? And so the unfortunate truth about what I just said is that that takes practice. And there's some things that just take practice. There's no philosophy around it. It's just pure, pure practice, you know? A good example of something that we can attribute to would be like weightlifting, right? Like I can tell you like all the reasons why this exercise is helpful or this exercise is useful or it won't, you know, break your body. But at the end of the day, to get stronger, you have to lift the weight and put the weight down consecutively for days, Right? Um, there's no philosophy to so painting like effectively well in Photoshop specifically, it's the same idea. Like you got to just be able to pick up and push down your pen at a very reasonable amount. And the only way to do that is just to practice. So what I just showed you is a good way to practice that, you know, just try to paint, you know, with total control and then also try to like paint like different shapes with very few strokes. So like try to do three shapes with three strokes. So like, let's say I do this shape. So I haven't lifted up my pen once for this. And then let's say do the second shape. And then do the third shape. And then see how that turns out. It's really hard if you don't practice it. And it gets harder if you don't understand some other stuff, like if you have a, don't have a good understanding of values and forms, you don't have a good understanding of design. So all this other stuff starts to become a big problem. If you go back and watch me paint this again uh, in the videos, um, you'll see everything I just talked about and you can see even when I do it for the secondary forms, I just paint in shapes pretty much how I expect them to be. And then I add lighting with some airbrush or some assistance from another brush. Do we have time for another question? Uh, this will be the last one. All right. Um, so earlier you were talking about uh, fundamentals. And yeah. I'm just kind of wondering, if, if, if you give me a model in five hours, I can paint that person and get a likeness and get the colors right and all that. Um, but fundamentals includes also being able to do that like without a model or a reference and just applying it to a concept. Yeah, so if you can't do it without a model, what do you think that means? It means I rely on observational painting way too much instead of designing my own. Yeah, and why do you think it's easy to do it observationally and why it's hard to do it without it? Well, because you have to come up with all the information on your own if you, if you don't have like an exact reference you're copying. Yeah, and so, so then... So then what do you think you can do to make that easier then to be able to draw from your own memory? 
I suppose your technique of studying where you study with the reference, you analyze it, take some notes, then take away the reference and try to reproduce it uh, slightly differently. You got it. <laughs> it's really, it's really <laughs> simple, y'all. Like, it's not like I stumbled upon anything new. This is not even my invention. It's this scientific method. It just works, you guys. It just does. Uh, the problem is that people think that art is some sort of cerebral, like, magistry right like it's some sort of magic power that people have like either you have it or you don't like you got talent or you don't got talent but the brain the human brain is a muscle and like all muscles it can grow it can adapt and it can get stronger leaner more effective right and uh if you take a hammer to your to your arm i'll break your arm if i take a hammer to your brain i break your brain and it's like just the same way too like if i hit take a hammer to your bicep in a very specific position, maybe now it'll, it'll be impossible to rotate your arm as much as you used to be able to, right? Um, and the same thing with the brain. If we take a chunk of your brain out, like if I smack your brain in a specific position, you know, and for whatever reason you're still alive, there's a chance that now you won't be able to, you know, count. You understand? And so, if you understand this simple principle that the, the brain is, is something that is physical, it's of, of the physical world. Some people believe that it isn't, but they're wrong. They're just uh, objectively wrong. Okay. And so once you understand this, then learning new things becomes incredibly easy. And easy is relative. Like you still put time and effort. It's just not complicated. That's all. Okay and and the more you do it the more you realize it's not that complicated okay and so when you go back to think about the model figure drawing model thing that you're talking about it's yeah. like it's like a very complicated puzzle that you're solving right like imagine like those 1000 piece puzzles where you have to put it together and there's already a picture you already know what the picture is supposed to look like you just need to find where the pieces go right yeah that's what it's like to do like a master copy. It's just like putting the pixels or the chalk in the right location. But you have the picture already. You don't need to know anatomy. You don't need to know how form works. You don't need to know how lighting works. You don't need to know any of this stuff. You're just putting the puzzle pieces back together. You're moving one image to another image, right? And that is a great way to check your answers like if you've already tried to practice and studied what from what you know it's a great way to check your answers it's a great way to learn a tool like if you want to get good at modeling then you should model something that already exists so that way you don't have to think about how to create something you're just thinking about how to use the tools right it's good to learn oil painting watercolor whatever right but to have it in your memory you need to know how things work why they look the way they do and at a very core level, and then that way you can start with some basic assumptions that are rooted in fact and have a drawing in a matter of minutes without any quote unquote reference because you've internalized it. Does it all make sense to you? Very much. And I think that this concept is really what's missing from almost every school. That's why they pay me the big bucks. <laughs> I mean, the school I'm at is focused on concept art and it's good yeah. and there's good teachers there, but like no one has ever, except for you, has ever specifically said like, study the reference, analyze it, then take away the reference and test what you know. That's yeah. simple. Because everybody treats it, yeah, everybody treats it like some sort of artistic talent, not like an artistic skill. And just like if I had to be good at math, I have to be tested to know and prove that I can solve, you know, linear equations. There's only there's a really good way to know if I do it or not. Take away the answers and give me an equation to solve. Right? Art is the same way. There's a it's the only parts that are subjective is if you like pirates versus dwarves. You know what I mean? That's subjective. That's your opinion, man. You know, if you think dwarves are better than pirates, <laughs> you know? That's your opinion. And so or you like vampires versus werewolves, Jacob versus Edward. That's all opinion. <laughs> but but having Edward having diamond skin and Jacob being shirtless, that is objectively good design tailored to young adolescent <laughs> girls. 
<laughs> that is objective. There is no arguing that. Just like putting uh, scantily clothed women in front of sports cars is the same for uh, young men in America. Okay, yeah. that yeah. is that is clear. Okay, and so um, with that though, I'm going to roll out. I have to run now. Thank you, class. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Talk to you guys later. Have a good weekend. Work your butts off. I'll see you guys real soon. Keep at it, y'all. Yeah, thank you. Later. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.